ಓಂ ಸರ್ವೇ ಭವಂತು ಸುಖಿನ ಸರ್ವೇ ಸಂತ ನಿರಾಮಯ ಸರ್ವೇ ಭದ್ರಾಣಿ ಪಶ್ಯಂತು ಮಾ ಕಶ್ಚಿತ್ ದುಃಖ ಭವೇತ್ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಹರಿ ಓಂ ತತ್ಸತ್ ಮೇ ಆಲ್ ಬಿ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ಮೇ ಆಲ್ ಬಿ ಫ್ರೀ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಡಿಸೀಸಸ್ ಮೇ ಆಲ್ ಸಿ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಗುಡ್ನೆಸ್ ಎವ್ರಿವೇರ್ ಮೇ ನೋ ಆನ್ ಸಫರ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಮಿಸರಿ ಮೇ ದರ್ ಬಿ ಪೀಸ್ ಪರ್ಪಿಚುವಲ್ ಪೀಸ್ ಬೈ ದ ಬ್ಲೆಸಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಎವ್ರಿವೇರ್ ಗುಡ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಸಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೈ ಟಾಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಈಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಅವರ್ ಮಾದರ್ ಅವರ್ ಫಾದರ್ whether most of you know it or not i am i grew up in india I was born and brought up in india and then after i had joined the monastic order i was sent by my monastic order to serve the children of god in this country since then i have been here i've been here for about 45 years when i first came one lady used to come to our center here she might have been in her 40s or something i don't know i was also in my 40s but i looked much younger that's what people said then once i addressed her as mother and that shocked her i was surprised why that shocked her then i realized that this is another culture this is not india in india a monk is supposed to address all women young or old as mother but this is a different country by calling that lady mother most probably that it has an implication that she looked older <laughs> yeah nobody wants to be physically old <laughs> because this is a materialistic society anyway but let me go back to india the india has that religion which is called hinduism we call it vedanta which is many thousand years old it is the most ancient living religion of the world there were other religions but they got wiped out in ancient egypt there must have been a religion but we don't even know what that religion was it is wiped out <coughs> but this religion which is called hinduism is still there is many many thousand years old and as i have told you before also this religion does not have that word blasphemy in it any sincere question can be asked about religion that's why all possible questions have been asked and the answers are also there they are all available in the scriptures of hinduism so there is an ancient holy book called Taittiriya Upanishad. What is Upanishad? Some of may wonder. Upanishad is, the meaning of the word Upanishad means something, the proximity of which will loosen the hold of ignorance of our divinity. That is Upanishad. So these books are that way. 
by reading these books people will learn things which will loosen the the ignorance of their own divinity and all theistic religions of the world teach that god is omnipresent so god must be present everywhere equally so this culture in which i was born teaches that everything is divinity so in those days the students had to go to the teachers homes and stay there to get education not just religious education but also how to live the life of a of an ideal person so the students had to stay with the teacher in the teacher's home and learn all those things so around 10 or 12 years of stay with the teacher the teacher would sometimes consider the students have qualified they don't need any more education so then the teacher would bid farewell to the students and in one of the farewell addresses given to the students we read <coughs> matri deva bhava pitta deva bhava acharya deva bhava atiti deva bhava this sanskrit utterances and in the taittiriya upanishad that chapter which is on education called shiksha dhyaya that's in that chapter we find this so the teacher is saying to the departing students look up on your mother as god look up on your father as god look up on your teacher as god look up on your guests as god they are all god but mother's place comes first matri deva and also in that culture <coughs> such utterances are there janani janma bhumischa swargadapi gariyasi that is mother and the motherland they are even superior to heaven such high is the place of mother she is god or mother or father <laughs> god actually is both but mother motherhood of god that aspect is the most charming and <coughs> the people in india were born in this so called hinduism <coughs> we call it vedanta vedanta means the end of all spiritual knowledge <coughs> in that religion is mentioned that nobody can pay mother's debt and <laughs> compared to mother's love for her children there is no other love which is as superior in that holy city called banaras or varanasi there are some <coughs> staircases leading to the water of the river and each of those staircases is called a ghat there is one ghat the name of which is dashashramet ghat actually in ancient times some 10 horses were killed there <laughs> 
Dash Ashwamedha. So there is a temple there, but temple is half sunken. Half of it is in water, the other half is on the bank. <coughs> when I visited Banaras, I asked, why is the temple half sunken? Can it not be <coughs> repaired? I was told that no, this temple is there to remind us that nobody can repay mother's debt. A man built a temple in honor of his mother. And after building that temple, he said, now I have paid mother's debt. <laughs> and as soon as he said that, the temple collapsed and half of it entered into water. <laughs> Uh, that is a half sunken temple in the city of Banaras to remind the Hindus how mother's love is and how one should love one's mother. And mother's love for her children is the highest form of human love. And that's why God is looked upon as mother. There are others also who may look upon God as father. <laughs> but <clears throat> mother's love for her children is the highest form of human love. That's why it is easy to place that love on God. There are so many stories showing respect to mothers in India. <clears throat> when I was a little boy, I was taught to respect my father and mother both as God. That's why when I started going to school, I used to salute my parents and then go to school. I saluted them to seek their blessings. <clears throat> and sometimes my father would not be there. He would have gone to do his work. At that time, his shoes were there and I would have to salute his shoes and go to school. That's why we <coughs> have great respect for our parents. Not only parents, you have great respect for our parents and the teachers and, and also the guests. Guests should be looked upon as God. This is the instruction. And I told you that mother's love <coughs> for her children is the highest form of human love. In Seattle, some young girls used to come and one of them was highly educated. She was unmarried. And one day she came and said to me, Swami, I would like to marry. I said, why do you want to marry? <laughs> well, I'm a monk. I don't understand the, <laughs> the importance of marriage in individual lives. But then she, she said, I want to be a mother. I want to have children. That's why I want to marry. She is married now and she has had a few children, at least two or three. <laughs> so, motherhood is inherent in women, it looks like. 
there was one Swami who was saintly and he was one of those great disciples of Sri Ramakrishna. His name was Swami Turiyananda. When we read his life, then we come to know that when he, he was a baby, his mother died. How did she die? Because Turiyananda at the time was a baby and a rabid fox was about to attack him. That is India. <laughs> So such foxes are there, but that particular fox was a rabid. And the mother of Swami Turiyananda, to save her child from that rabid fox, faced, faced that fox and the fox beat her. As a result of that, his father, mother, Turiyananda Swami's mother passed away to save her child from the bites of a rabbit fox, she gave her life. Such is the love of mother. <clears throat> Once one person came to Sri Ramakrishna said, how shall I look upon God? Then he said, how shall I love God? Then he said, you love your parents and project that love on God. <laughs> what love you have for your parents? So, in fact, he echoed what we have in our scriptures. Which the scriptures say that look upon your God as your father, as your mother, as your parents. <laughs> Having been born in that culture, I have learned to respect all women. And in India, the women know that the monks respect all women. That was many years ago when I was a young Swami as the headquarters of the Ramakrishna order of monks and which is near Calcutta. And I was sent to Calcutta to do some of his work. And after doing my work when I was coming back, I had to come by train, traveling by third class, the lowest class. And the coach of the train was filled with people. And so I had only standing room there. I stood there and I had a handbag which I put down the floor. And when the railroad station came where I had to get off, then I had to pick up that bag and then I bent low. And when I bent low, then my forehead touched the forehead of a young woman. She was a married woman because she had vermilion mark on her forehead. Some Hindu women in India, they, after marriage, they put some vermilion mark on their foreheads. So that lady was, had that vermilion mark on her forehead. It's powder, vermilion powder. And when I bent low, my forehead touched her forehead and some of that vermilion powder clung to my forehead 
and she felt very embarrassed because I was a monk and what has had happened was something very strange, unexpected. Then to save her from her embarrassment, I said to her, Mother, don't be embarrassed. The vermilion from the mother's forehead has come to her son's forehead. <laughs> when I said that to her, she was pleased. She was used to the idea that a monk respects all women as mothers. She is Harada Devi, who is looked upon as a divine incarnation by the Ramakrishna order and his devotees. Her picture is behind me. <laughs> she used to look upon herself as the mother of everybody. Sri Ramakrishna, her spiritual consort, another divine incarnation said to her, you have come to teach the world the motherly love of God. So her love was that way. To her, everybody was a child. And she, she used to say, I'm the mother of the good and I'm the mother of the wicked. To her, both were the same. She saw no, no difference between the good and the bad. That's how mother's love is. In India, if you go by train, of course, I've been away from India for many years, but the India which I knew, there in the trains and buses, there are special seats for women. Those are called ladies' seats. <laughs> they are meant for women who are mothers. Those who grew up in that culture, they learn to respect all women as mothers. And not only respecting, but looking upon all women as God in mother's form. My mother was the mother of all. In her old age, she wanted to go to a place of pilgrimage and live there. And that's why she chose to live in this holy city of Banaras. And there, is, there are two centers of the Ramakrishna order in Banaras. One is a hospital center, the other one is a temple and the monks respected my mother just as my mother respected all monks. Anyone going to her would become her child. So the monks who lived there, they knew my mother very well because of her love and affection for them. And there was one devotee named Mr. Anar Jit. He was from Fiji Island. I met him in the city of Vancouver in Canada. And for some reason, I had to visit Vancouver's many, many times. 
we started the Vedanta Center there. And now there is a Swami there who has been sent by the headquarters of the Ramakrishna order. But before that, every year I used to go there and visit. And there I met one devotee. His name is Anarjit. He was from Fiji, as I have told you. She was a barber. And he, has, he had his shop and he would give me a free haircut. <laughs> I went to his shop a few times and there in his shop I saw a coin framed and put there. It was, I think, a rupee coin, Indian rupee coin. Then I became curious and I asked him what that coin was there for. And he said, this coin is very holy. It has been given by a saintly, motherly woman. And on inquiry, I came to know that that woman was no other than my mother. When Anarjit visited Banaras, then he went to see my mother also. And my mother was in the habit of giving gifts to the people whom she came to know. And she was busy doing her worship and all and she said to Mr. Anarjit, well I'm sorry I cannot spend much time with you but I want to give you a gift and she looked and then found that coin, it was probably a rupee coin, she said please take this and buy some food with this that will, and eat that food that will make me happy. Her motherly heart, heart would be happy. Mr. Jeet, Anar Jeet, considered that as very holy. And he never spent that money. And he framed it and put it in his... <laughs> in Vancouver, BC, in Canada, in his barber shop. That is Anarjit. And after coming here, I read the news in the newspaper. That news was about a stray cat in Brooklyn city. What did the cat do? The cat entered a burning house the house was on fire and the cat entered that house two or three times to bring out the kittens which were there in that house. Usually animals are extremely scared of fire, but that mother cat was not afraid and went inside that burning house and brought out the kittens. This was news in this country. But to us who grew up in a country like India, it was no news, it was natural. <laughs> the stray cat in Brooklyn behaved like <laughs> a mother. In the life of Sri Ramakrishna, who is a divine incarnation, we come to know that he respected God as the divine mother also. And he taught us 
that the divine mother and god they are all one and the same and this divine mother is called shakti and god is called brahman shri ram krishna is to teach that brahman and shakti they are identical just as fire and its capacity to burn both are identical you can separate one from the other so he would not differentiate between genders and he would look up on his own wife sarada devi as the divine mother in fact he worshiped her when she was around 16 years old as the divine mother their marriage was never consummated the way marriages are consummated in in the, in the, in the world their marriage was spiritual marriage and sri ramakrishna was <coughs> living in a temple complex which is in dakhineshwar near calcutta and there are several temples there which were installed there by one very famous rich <coughs> lady called rani rasmani the british gave her the title queen <laughs> and her son in law was mathur he used to supervise the temples yeah, mathur was well educated and everything and so mathur wanted to take sri ramakrishna out on a pilgrimage then sri ramakrishna went with him to the holy city of brindavan which is in north india when in brindavan sri ramakrishna <coughs> got to know about ganga mai is woman saint and sri ramakrishna at that time was early 30 years old and ganga mai might have been in her 60s and ganga mai that means mother ganga so to say would look upon sri ramakrishna as her child so to say and with her saintly eyes she could see that sri ramakrishna was a divine incarnation and she is the incarnation of sri radha the divine consort of sri krishna <laughs> and she would treat him that way and sri ramakrishna also became very fond of ganga mai mother ganga mai means mother and ganga mai wanted him to stay sri ram krishna with her yes she, she would look upon sri ram krishna as a child as i told you the divine child so to say but one devotee named hridaya had gone with sri ramakrishna on the trip and that hridaya came to know about it and he thought that it would not be proper for ramakrishna to live in vrindavan his mother was 
living in Dakhineshwar village just outside Calcutta. So she would be very upset had he been living in Vrindavan. That's why Hidai was able to somehow persuade Sri Ramakrishna to go to his own mother in the Kirishwar. That's how uh, Sri Ramakrishna had to come back to the Kirishwar. Ganga Mai, the woman saint of that neighborhood called Nidhuban in Vrindavan, looked upon Sri Ramakrishna as her child, divine child. And Sri Ramakrishna also looked upon her as divine mother. So Sri Ramakrishna is to say, I've already mentioned that, that is Brahman and Shakti, these two are one and the same. That means the Divine Mother and God, they're both the same. God is truly speaking beyond gender. <laughs> See, is God our mother or father? If we ask this question, then the answer is God is beyond both of them. <laughs> or God is both mother and father. That is the answer. I am glad that the picture of the Divine Mother, Sarata Devi, is <coughs> around me when I am giving the talk. And also, the picture of Sri Ramakrishna is around, about, around me when I was giving the talk. That both my spiritual parents, father and mother. So the question was, is God our father or mother? Or is God our mother or father? God is both. <laughs>